Welcome back to another animation analysis and reaction video. And this time I'm gonna take a look at Kena, if that's the pronunciation. Kena, Kena, Bridge of Spirits. And this is actually the end of the trailer because the title is here, but it's also already very cool. So I'm gonna take a look at this already. There's so much in there that's basically, you can almost go back into a bouncing ball. But if you have something on a path, I love this, how it's actually curving alongside the path. So that's for anybody who does something like that. Sometimes you have, you know, people draw, animate dragons or something just make sure that if you do fly around you have a bit of that drag and it will follow the tail will follow that that path so you don't want something that goes this way to then just be always pointing this way it's neat when it actually goes and leads into that path there but it's great you got already some stretch there with an interesting shape into this and i like how it kind of curls up and kind of gets into that top side so even just on something like this there's interesting contrast and complexity. And look at that timing too. It goes, you got that little bit of a fast up with a slight hang time hold, quick down. So just that alone, I haven't even gone into the actual game or the cinematics. You have interesting timing, nice contrast, follows the nice path. And here you got your ball squash and then stretch with little overshoot and settle. All of that is in there and it's cute too. I like that little transition from this to now you got eyes popping up the details coming in and then this and even after that you have a cute little blink and it's not just the lids you see a bit of a squash in the body which is it gives kind of that squishiness kind of organic feel and the cute little eye darts and even at the end watches at the end you got that little huh and even that goes for contrast so it's not just a blink or a kind of a look you can see how fairly okay i can't even draw it straight but it's a fairly straight line there and then as you go down into your little tiny little squash and another kind of change of emotion of whatever that creature is gonna feel now you can see it's not this but it's not going i can't even draw from straight to somewhat like this right so you have a slight change this way just for contrast so you don't repeat yourself on this blink you don't want this blink to be exactly the same as this also gives it kind of a cutie pie thing of kind of that that tilt of a the puppy head tilt to the side with a little bit of extra movement there look at this Beep. all right it's so cool just that alone if you're starting out with animation you can think about well i'm going to do just a little bit of a shape thing maybe a bouncing ball floating around a little bouncing ball with character well there you go you can do this you can add it on a specific piece of set that could be part of a title or not but also this cool thing which i know it's particles but you could technically just have maybe only two or three let's say three of them and animate these by hand and do this you can do all of this by hand so i haven't even started yet and i love this already let's go to the beginning and start off with that it's very cool i'm always a big fan of contrast and movement you can see how hands are together slightly fists there but arms are up and then the other one comes in where they're just slightly higher and you can see just the difference the difference in this so and you can see the floppier hands like there were more fists and these are open fingers so this goes back into contrast if you have especially similar looking characters right you got backpack is somewhat similar hair is somewhat similar i mean you still have contrast in how that hair is shaped but you want to go in there well how do i make them different well movement is going to be something posing is going to be something you can see the difference where it's mostly elbow up and with this it's mostly elbow down so just for that already it's very cute and contrasty and i'm already very smitten just by the looks and the renders these guys are super cute. This is why I wanted to take a look at this. You have three different characters, three different intros. This is for you too. If you have three different ones, how do I start a shot? You can have a regular walk and it's definitely in focus. This is the first eyes that we see. But then you have these ones coming in. This character comes in sideways. This character waking up yawning. You can see a bit of a offset there in the arms and legs. It's very cute. And also, <laughs> I didn't even see this before grabs that and eats but you can see all the detail in the lids again as this goes up and down here you can see how it still influences the rest of the geometry of the mesh here. it still pushes things up a bit so it's not super static just gives you a little bit of that organic feel to it and that too it's pretend you have multiple characters right and some of these are out of focus you still want to continue even though i'm focusing on this this color Right? as it is appears you still kind of understand is swallowing it and this character is still this one is still blinking even though the focus is there 
So this is very nerdy and detail-y, but even something that's out of focus, it keeps going. It's still alive. It still has movement. There's still something to do. Ember Lab is the company. Let me scrub forward a tiny bit here. And then we have the new character introduction. Look at that. Super cute. Love that. That's always cute. That's kind of your, your mirroring pose to some degree. It's not really putting up its arms like her. But this is something for you in terms of body language as you go through your studies of body language. If a character agrees with someone else, you can try this. If you are in a round table discussion or somewhere in a classroom or somewhere in a group of people, you will see how if they have a discussion and this person agrees with this person, they will subconsciously at one point mirror their pose just because they agree with it. Like once you see it, you can't unsee it. Even when you know it, I still do it. And even they're like, ah, oh, I just did it. I did that, that mirroring pose. All right. It's a bit more of a subtle breathing and hole, but you can scrub through, you can see, you can see the changes in the corners, mouth corners, you can see it in the eyebrows. Sometimes the shots that don't really move are the more tougher ones because it's so subtle. You don't want it to be stiff, but you don't want it to be too too busy, but you can see here as, as you scrub, this is a test for you. You know, when you scrub fast, you can see the changes that are happening a bit clearer, but you can see it shoulders and the face still in there. It's very subtle. You can see it towards the end, especially transitions into quick action shots. That's something too. When you have movements that are really, really fast, I mean, this is obviously out of focus, but as you get into focus, you have to be mindful that when you have things that move around quickly, interesting that she's not really holding this. It's going to be all blurry. So you have to, or you, I mean, you have the control over what moves and what is blurred. So an arm that kind of sticks in this pose, that is going to stand out in that movement. I know she holds that pose and at the end, and ultimately with the lighting and everything, it's a fairly clear silhouette. But if you have quick action and stuff is moving, the head is moving, but you really want something to read, let's say you want to read that expression, then you can continue all that movement, but somehow, keep that head from moving too much so that the blur gets reduced so you can read it better. This is not super evident in this shot, but I'm talking about just in general, when you have fast movement, look at what you can slow down for a read. You can see this again here and in this shot, if you go frame by frame in this, it's not quite apparent in this one, but this always helps too with the lighting that you have some sort of a silhouette. It's a tricky thing though with that staff over the body but also the focus is also on this here here you have your evasion of a creature a cool looking creature but even something like this right you still have your whatever pose it is this is your character pose it's somewhat alert you got the knees that are bent so it's ready to go down jump it's not just a static relaxed pose like yeah it's wednesday or whatever it's already right off the bat it tells that character is ready you have a clear change in a silhouette for arms, but you have the compression for the anticipation to jump. And every time you jump, you always have a full extension of your legs. Clean pose, clean silhouette, thanks to the lighting as well. Into that roll, even in this, you got clean posing, even on that, it's nice. Into that, cool. Ah, oh, it's very neat. Even this here, you got your slight drag on the hands, even on details like that, they're in the dark. Still looking at all the details. And then you got that staff handoff where you have the hands that, or the fingers that anticipate. When you have something in your hand here, just think about that. When you let go of this, it's not just going to be that this is moving away from the hand at the same time as the fingers open. You want to anticipate this and loosen the grip. And you can see this, how the fingers are opening here already. Then it has its own trajectory, hand can come off. And now this hand comes in, very clear silhouette. Also nice with the color contrast. It really stands out. So we understand I am now gripping this with this hand. Ooh, even this here, look at that. You got a little offset there. Even on something like this, quick and blurry, you still have control over your poses. You want to make sure that it reads properly. And it does. I mean, you can play this in real time and you can see how that, that handoff is very clear. Also, what's cool, look at the staff. I should probably change colors again here. Look at the staff when she lets go and grabs it again, the weight of it. Boom. See this? So you have, it feels like this part is heavier. So when she holds this, see it goes down 
but then comes back up. There's a bit of a wobble. Watch this again. See that? There's a bit of a move and you can see on the on the uh, end sides that go in and out and up and down. It really gives us a sense of weight. So as you grab this, now, this doesn't feel like paper. So if you would just constrain this to the hand and not consider the weight, if you move that wrist, this staff is going to move around like crazy and it gives us not the right impression of weight. It's very cool, you know, something like that. Just that detail is in there. I love that idea too. This is really cool that you have the light effect that she then grabs and that becomes an arrow just from a visual point of view. It's very cool. Now, I have no idea about archery, but watching making ofs of Hunger Games, they say it has to be very close to the body and not elbow out or up or I can't remember. <laughs> Something for you archery fans to think about. Interesting though, cool finger pose. And now we're going to focus on the head. So now, zooming in and getting in there and you got your asymmetry in the mouth. You got a change as well in uh, the eye position and just kind of the opening, how big it is. But even hair wise, you got your asymmetry in there. It's very cool. Can't really see it. It's probably not there. I would have loved to see um, that right before the, the letting go, a slight change, maybe a squinty thing. I mean, it is squinting actually here. Must be because of the light, but it would have been cool, like some tensing in the lips there. Very cool effects. Love that. I'm a big fan of stuff like this here too. So this is a cool looking render, the textures, like the little slight little effects there, but we still have, you know, characters still in the background there. It's very cool. These are really cute still. That's just me now, not analyzing anything. This is just me looking at the frame. Very cool. Like lots of really cool effects. This is more for effects people. I'm just marveling at the look of this. It's very cool. But looking at the animation, I love that you have that, the bubble, right, as it goes out. The animation is nicely timed there. As this finishes, again, clear posing here. You have to always look at kind of either, it's a, is it the color silhouette or is it color silhouette? I mean, it's a body silhouette there, right? But you still have dark versus light. Even this here on a slight color change, all that reads as a nice silhouette. Let me see how those arms go. You can see how leads with the shoulders and elbows especially elbows you're not shoulders the elbows as they come out and you can see here see how that curve and as she pulls this you can just feel this even if it's over one frame you can see the straightening the drag in this in the fingers it's really crazy once you go frame by frame into animation you can really see the detail that being put in there also as you go as she moves forward this way the head has a drag this way which then corrects and goes straight towards the end little details but i love that i love that complexity in the mechanics and just in the posing there cool too that's always important there you gotta make sure like when do you blink right is that she realizes what just happened it's kind of like a ah i got the squintiness of the strain teeth together and then the opening with the eyebrows and the eyes but look at this here once she has this i love the the darts because she's, she's looking at something, right? So anything that's happening off screen that we don't see, she is telling us through her facial animation what's going on. So there's a sense of wonder, but she's also analyzing things because she is darting around. It's not a static stare goes, oh, what is that? But she's looking, she's processing, like, what is this? And just through that, that gives us a sense of what is she looking at? Bam! Then it turns into that and that's kind of the answer. Ah, but we don't know more. Clever, clever. Again, nice silhouette, color, boom. It's very cool. Oh, finger animation, always hard to do. But you got your classic triangle clean pose. And here you can go a bit more complicated. It's not too bad. Why not? But you can still have complexity within the shape, right? But if you do your squinty test or perfectly illustrated here through the blur, this just reads as a nice hand pose because it's, and again, it's a classic triangle hand pose there. And as you go into something a bit sharper, you still have complexity within that, but it doesn't distract from the overall shape. This is also nicely broken here in terms of the silhouette. Uh-huh, we got a little bit of shakiness in there. 
hopefully through animation layers or whatever setup they have. It's always, I mean, that's kind of why we do it. We have at work, at least we have controllers where you have a hand controller, but within the, you know, the outline hierarchy, you have multiple nodes. So I can add all kinds of shakiness, top or bottom for different um, pivots or whatever. But if you would do that, you know, it's built into the rig or through layers. So you don't have to do general finger animation, hand animation, and the shakiness on top of it. Again, you can scrub through this. You can see the change. It's like you have more strain. You can see how she relaxes a bit here. That's cool to see too. If you scrub, watch the eye. This here. That means there are darts. That's really clever. I love this. That's actually... I don't remember the last time I saw that in a movie. The attention to detail where if you have eyeballs and you dart around while your lids are closed, you can, you can film yourself. You can see how the skin of your lid is still moving. That eyeball is pushing against the lid and it's still going to move that, that lid around. And you can see this here, and especially again when I scrub, you can see that. So she's not just relaxing, something's going on. Either it's in some sort of meditation, trance, sleeping, REM sleep, where there's still thought process going on, or she's just thinking she's somewhat awake, but still thinking. But anyway, that's actually a cool detail. Didn't even notice that before. Ooh, back to this. Sorry, this is just me oogling at this point now. Cool, I love that stuff. Just cool colors. I love the composition. I love all this. Oh, look at that design. It's very cool. I know, this is not me just devolving into cool. But it is. Come on, I said this is a trailer analysis and reaction clip. This is so cool. Bam. This is cool too. I love animating stuff like that when it's not simmed. And you have whatever effect you have. And again... Let me switch colors here. So you have all this. You have a shock wave coming towards us, right? You can see this here. All of this reacting, and this goes towards us. This goes this way because because that shock wave is going to the outside there. I personally love animating stuff like that. You can have stuff like this here. I don't know how this was done. If this was simmed or uh, done by hand, but you know, if you have, if I had an animation where I would animate a character doing something <laughs> with a shockwave, I would absolutely put stuff in the foreground and move this by hand just because I like it. <laughs> I like animation. Curious, this could be the continuation of, where did we go? Here, right? Mm, could this be, no, it's, this is part of the character. There's no staff. Could this be part of the staff? I'm just looking at, connections here if this moment here is after what we saw but anyway let's go back to seeing what's going on here tricky shots fast shots are tricky in terms of reading the face so you want to be not that you have to be broad but it definitely helps to have a you got your eye kicker it really reads big wide eyes big contrast into losing eyes and and squishing this together back into stuff that i love here Cool. Super slow-mo is bubbles. Is she underwater? We don't know. No, it's just floating. Character's still here. I don't know what's going on, but I like it. Like the look of this. She is underwater. Ooh. Not much to say here animation-wise. I mean, you have clean silhouettes. Again, color. You got the dark and the light. All of that reads very clearly. Not too complicated shape with the uh, with the legs. And just some movement and keep alive because it is slow motion and underwater. Ah, oh, this is cool to look at though. Once you're so close, you can't just do well. Let me just turn my blend shape on for lid closing. You still have to have the skin surrounding this and all of that react to it. And again, you can scrub where you can see the amount of changes. You actually have. A relaxation of that brow going up as the lid closes and you can even see a change in the cheeks you can see with that either what i can't remember if that's if she has a mole or not or something on her face but or a shadow i don't know not a shadow the shadow wouldn't move on the skin like this but you can see the amount of detail that you got to put in even though it's you know it's more stylized but once you're close up, you can't get away with super simple, purely just eyelid animation. You have to think about the muscles and everything. But also acting wise, what is going on? Is she dying? Is she just relaxing? Like whatever the context is, well, it's not just eyes closing. You have to think about all the other parts of the face that will tell the story and, and push that emotion of the character. Ah, and then, oh man, I love these already. I'm super spinning by this thriller, I have to say. Actually, everything. The look of this, love that. Love the character. 
Love these guys. This is your more of a gameplay moment there. We can finally see what it looks like. Ooh, interesting. How fast was that? Pretty fast anticipation there through that jump. But that goes into more game mechanics and animation that I am not super versed in. This just stood out as being very fast. Cool though. Double jump. We gotta have a double jump. Super spitting by these little creatures though. Oh. See, we're back into just interesting shapes. This reminds me of what was that called? Drop it was called is a, a Disney short called Drop that has something where because of its you know texture and like composition, like it's a it's a raindrop. Um it plays around with shapes a lot like this, which is really cool. I highly recommend that you watch that one. It's in Disney Plus. Cute, cute, cute though. Love all that stuff. All right, looking at her, a very bouncy hair knot here. You can see that as well. Oh, <laughs> very bouncy there. Cool though. You can still have that, that little reaction that still goes through the body into the knee. If you see this, just that little move in the knee. That's what I tell my students all the time. If you have, if you have a head move, right? You have to think about how that body mechanic movement or just that body part movement affects the rest and it's going to affect it and fade out so you have all of this going into here so a head move is going to really affect this section here the neck and the chest probably the shoulders and move potentially because of that the elbows and in this case because she also has you can see this the root going up and down and the settle it's going to continue to influence everything else so bottom mechanics are kind of you know need a lot more work is when you just have this joint of the head animated where just the head goes up and there's nothing else moving and reacting and being influenced by that move so this is shot as a good reminder of always think about that think about well what body part is moving and what else is it going to influence oh cute and we got these little guys transforming into this cute you got your little tiny anticipation into a jump but cute little hang time there let's watch this in real time cute and then you got that. I love that. See, even this here, you have this on top. And even though this goes up and then changes direction, this is your drag and overlap when you can see how it, there's a slight delay in that frog with a little bit of a drag there. And then as this lands, this then overlaps and compresses on top of the head and so on and so on. It does that throughout. It's cute. You can even see that bigger stretch at the end there. You can see that. <laughs> cute. And then you got that cute little pose. Oh, cute. I love this. Oh, and even that, again, for contrast, I love that detail. Whoever animated this, love it. You got the overlap with the detail of one arm. And when it happens again, it's a leg and it's not an arm. Just for complexity and contrast. I love this. I would love to know who animated this. I want to give you a virtual high five. It's cute, though. This is a really good example of saying, well, you have multiple characters that look exactly the same. What can you do? Well, all right, you can put some props in there, little changes, frogs and this, but you still have to go through through movement, like how this guy dances is different than this guy jumping around and looking. I think that's a good example in that you can study in terms of contrast. Contrast through movement. That's so cool. Yeah, it's really interesting to see the changes between the in-game and this, well, I would assume not in-game, with cutscene there. Cute though, I love all this. Again, this goes into contrast, right? So you have this, that's a fairly stabilized pose, but then instead of just going up and going, oh, I love it, it's cute. There's a slight move that gives you a really nice line of action that has a curve that gives you a contrast. You can get one leg out for this. And because of that, the head has to compensate. So that gives you more asymmetry. And then with that, the arms are also on this side. It's not exactly in the middle. There's so much that goes in this, love this. And as she lets go, she drops a little bit and then squeeze. Oh man, I would have loved for those eyes to <laughs> squeeze a bit more. For you guys, like, oh wait, but I love this. Like, what is going on? The little eye darts. That's cute. That, even on something like this, see? Contrast and everything. It's not a twin pose, but I like that. And because the character goes so far to the left, right? This gives you the opportunity to go more to the, uh, to the left, sorry. Going to the left gives you room to go to the right. Again, it gives you opportunities for shape changes and contrast. I'm just a big contrast person. I, I love that. And then you got the other character that's not as important, but you don't want to just do, do nothing. And you can still see from that pose to, oh, cute. And squatting down to look at that. Still have 
enough changes, but it don't really distract from this. And again, you can look at little parts here that have the drag and overlap. Lots of squishiness. I love the rhythm of this. All right. Bum, bum, bum. You can see it's not, again, it's not even in your, in your timing. Hold, down, fast, up, hold, down, fast, up, hold. It's like a musician type of thing, right? But watch this. Let's go back a bit, back a bit. Watch this guy now. And what, what, what? What is the timing of it? It's good stuff. I love it. Back into game. Oh, I love that stuff. I don't know why, but I just had that uh, <laughs> Breath of the Wild. Da -da -da -da. That sound when you have the Sheikah Sleep, all that blue stuff in there. Ooh, almost Switzerland Alps. I know it's not snow, but cool look. Oh, come on, just the look of the game is going to be fantastic. I love this. All right, back into, into your gameplay. Let me just see. Let me just see. Yes, yes, yes. That Again, something that students sometimes overlook. I love just the idea of having a human with a creature. It could be a vice versa. It could be a tiny creature, a tiny human and a big creature. But I like the, the contrast, right? You got your size contrast. But what I was looking at is that, okay, well, you have this creature jumping up. Again, full leg extension and you jump. You don't want to jump with your legs bent. So like this already, this is your stretch. Then going up into your visual squash. And then you do want to have at least one leg straight down when you land. It's very... It hurts your knees when you land with bent legs. So that's cool. But I was going to look at, will this influence the shoulder? And yes, it does. You can see how the shoulder goes down. So don't forget, even something small like this has weight. And it's going to influence whatever surface it's going to hit. And look at that. She has a bit of a look and change in the eyes. So the focus is there, focus change. That's probably something I point out to students not the most. I mean, I have my most common animation mistakes list, but something I point out a lot is just eye line and making sure that when something is moving that the character darts and looks and focuses. Otherwise, it looks like they're just completely disconnected. So like eye darts and and just eye focus and eye line. Um, it's definitely something I mention a lot. So it's cool to see that that's in there. Even on something like this, a bit of a head change. Just the position of it. Whoa, sorry. Now this is me just nerding out. Look at that. That's cool. I like this. I like this game. Whoa. Back into that one pop with dissipation. Interesting. Definitely will be responsive, but you got your full extension, full stretch here. It's very cool. Into your roll. Tricky though, but you can see how some of these. Uh, that's gameplay and not anime just because you got a bit of a wiggly tip there and then again that that one frame pop down it's a cool look gotta say that's cool too sorry this is now a bit less than animation here but although you do still have contrast not everybody's moving at the same time comes in close i love that is that like a, a combined attack you have your guys helping you out with this, spilling over into that. It's very cool. That's cool too for contrast there. You can see just the, the weight. I know there's camera shake, but still, it's the difference in weight, the timing, like how quick, like smaller body parts will move faster than bigger parts. So you can, this has to be slower, but even on the bigger creature, Smaller body parts can still move fast enough. So you can still have that, that fast move down on that hand. And I like this too, where you have your fingers together, but then splayed out to come back in here. It's cool contrast in these. Oh, switching to, this is your uh, Zelda targeting thing. I know this is not Zelda specific, but it just all makes me think of Breath of the Wild. Really cool art design and look. That's cool too. Let me look at this again here. Cool. Even on that though, you got your nice posing, very clean, clean silhouette. But even in all of <clears throat> in all of this here, you still have because you're not always, you know, like you have to really make sure that all the posing is clear because the camera's gonna rotate around. Now, even if you target, it's gonna be pointed towards the character, but still, these are very clear posing through all of this. Very cool. Love the weights too, as it goes up and down. 
check this out again. Just that. Yeah, it's neat. And you got that leg coming down first. That then takes, you know, stops the momentum of this section, can't go further down. The legs are stopping it. And then you got the buckling and the overlap of this. Even in gameplay stuff, you can check out stuff for animation, body mechanics and principles. It still has to be all be in there. I love this, by the way. Straight to the drag. That's cool. Something for you to think about as you do your body mechanics, whatever you have. Even the props are going to have some sort of give. that gives us either a sense of how strong she is to bend this or the material of that. So cool. Yeah, you got to have your freeze frames. <laughs> ah, cool. That I'm a big fan of. That's definitely something I talk a lot in my classes and my uh, actually acting analysis for animators. I, it's when you have anything like an outside influence, right? In this case, it's this force field, this energy field that goes out. It is going to influence the hair. That to me just feels more like it's really part of this. You can see how this bubble goes through and pulls the cloth here. You can see this here. And then it settles. Love that. And when that is not happening, be it in a game, be it in a cinematic, be it in the in a movie where you're someone animated a character and then the effects are done on top of that, but then the character does not react to a shockwave or something. That's just to me always a missed opportunity. I love that this is in there. Also, nice pose. Still somewhat clean. I mean, it's a bit more complex, but it's, it's close up. It's not distracting. Color silhouette too. Nice little change in the face at the end too. Just there. Oh, nice too. Let's look at this here for your anticipation. You got your somewhat squash in the face as the eyebrows come together and then you see the stretch on the on the jaw going down into this cool too again cloth is influenced by that shock wave still moving up as it floats it's really cool that's cool too. I don't know if that's just a idle as you stand. She takes a step, but it's also somewhat working with as this goes out, you still have the cloth reacting to that. And she takes a little step back. Cute. And you got this guy coming back in here too. Lands. Oh, so cool. And that's the end. Ah, oh, bummer. Could talk about this for much longer, but. I don't want to test your patience here. This has been an half an hour, half an hour already. Anyway, that's it. That is my nerdy analysis. Whoever animated this, bravo. It looks fantastic. The, the animation is great. The look is great. This is definitely a game I want to play. And that's it for Kena, if that's your pronunciation, Bridge of Spirits. Thank you for watching. Check out the rest of my channel if you want to see more analysis stuff. And uh, that's it. Thank you for watching.